Be me new D&D player dwarf fighter. Be not me. Tabaxi bard. Drow sorcerer. DM. Currently level 2. Previous. Less interesting. Sessions. Party hired by a cloaked individual to assassinate the emperor. On the way through the emperor's palace trying to find his chambers. Find a disturbing alchemical mix that sorcerer expects would cause an explosion. As well as a map of the city with X's all over. Presumably denoting where vials just like the Subberry. Find Emperor's Chamber. Kill Emperor's Guards. Find Emperor is already dead. City starts exploding. Fire and smoke everywhere. Party. Somehow. Makes it out alive. And escapes to one of the 17 states of the Empire. Sorcerer's birthplace. Cloak guy finds us. We don't tell him we weren't the ones to kill the Emperor. But we do say we didn't explode the city. He gives us a piece of paper that has the location of our payment. We don't immediately go looking for it. Because DM tells us that it won't disappear. Part 1. Party hired by government in sorcerer's home state to find and kill a serial killer. Whose victims corpses were described as artistic. Primary suspects are two nobles. Party visits first nobles mansion. Missing one member. Bard's player had a family emergency. Brief talk with guards. They ask the lord of the estate. He agrees to let us in and answer our question. We talk with him. Find that he's been interrogated by the guards before. We note that he's a fan of art. Which we think might be relevant. Says he suspects the other noble. The one we were told was already a suspect. We leave. Thanking him for his compliance. Party enters the mansion owned by other suspect. Party immediately realizes that this is the serial killer. Traps everywhere starving people locked in rooms. Giant blocks falling on said people and crushing them. Giant boulders rolling around Indiana Jones style. Tripwires that make the floor fall when they're tripped. Tripwires that make the floor fall if they aren't tripped. Acid pit. Invisible walls that prevent jumping over the acid pit. And a poisoned cake. Sorcerer sees cake on a pedestal. And kicks it. Hear voice call out from the shadows you bitch you ruined my cake. Sorcerer. Sorry, I didn't know it was your cake. Voice, eat the cake now, or I'll make you pay. I decide to roll a survival check, with proficiency, to see if the cake is dangerous. Fail. Me fuck. I scrape a tiny bit of cake off the ground with my finger and taste it. DM, roll a constitution save. Forget that I have dwarven resilience. New player, this is my third session ever. I refuse to accept the blame. Fail. DM. You have disadvantage on all checks and saves until this wears off. Me. Voice. Cackling. I didn't expect anyone to actually fall for that one. That just made my day. Conversation that I don't remember. We start searching the mansion. Since I have disadvantage. And no investigation bonus. And sorcerer is an asshole. In character. I set off a couple dozen traps. Including one of the tripwires that makes the floor not fall. Luckily, voice is mocking us the whole time. Laughing when we set off traps. Pouting when we don't. I end up taking about 10 damage total. Have 20 max. Use second wind to recover. Take some extra damage. Sorcerer finds a relatively trap free room. Locks me in. And suggests that I get a short rest. No other option. So I do. Sorcerer keeps watch outside. Suddenly, hammer knocks sorcerer out. End of session. DM notes that it didn't actually count as any rest and that if I had taken a larger piece of cake, I might have died. He said it should have been obvious it was a trap. Part 2. Wake up in a cage surprisingly. Bard is in the cage with us. No light. But we all have dark vision. DM is annoyed. Says 5e hands it out like candy. Cage is 30 feet off the ground. With giant color lobsters beneath us. Suspended 10 feet down from the ceiling. On one side, see an opening 20 feet from the cage, same height. Bard has an idea use rope to climb down to the lobsters to try to fight them. Party agrees and is about to attempt, when someone rolls to investigate the rope. Nat 20. Rope is sabotaged, wouldn't be able to hold more than 25 pounds. Decides not to, investigate more, see winch of some sort above us, holding cage up. Sea cage is also connected to rail that leads to the opening. Hatch a plan. Start swinging the cage. Then Bard uses my war pick to break the winch. Allowing us to get to the opening. And safety. All roll deck saves. Bard rolls attack. All succeed. Even me. Still with disadvantage from the cake. 
Make it to the opening. Find room filled with feathers. Presumably to soften the impact. Party leaves the cage. Finds chest in the room. Surprisingly, it contains all of our gear. Me. Don't we already have our gear? Check all our stuff. Turns out everything we had was sabotage. DM tells us that he meant to take all of our stuff. But forgot. Decided that he would replace and sabotage it all instead. Meaning all of the stuff we had in the cage was sabotaged fakes. And we probably would have died if we fought the lobsters. I decide to load my, not sabotaged, backpack with feathers in any spare pockets. Just for flavor. Find door. All investigate. All fail horribly. DM. You all think that this door is the most honest door ever made. I open door. Nothing happens. On the other side. Sorcerer investigates a mechanism. Finds out that if the door had been forced. Trap would have activated. Trap is a giant boot behind us that would punch us into the room. Looney Tunes style. Suddenly. Voice from before speaks up. Or oh, you didn't play with my pets downstairs. You didn't fall to your deaths in the cage. And now you didn't even get kicked. You're making me so sad. Suddenly, boot activates anyway. We all fail deck saves, and get booted through into the next hallway. Find ourselves in a barren bedroom. All make investigation check. Sorcerer gets that 20. Finds trap door under the rug. Decide to open it. Find 20 foot ladder going straight down. End of session. Part 3. Party debating on whether or not to go down the ladder. Decide to do it. I volunteer to go first. To test it, tie rope around myself first, then tie the other end around the bed, in case the ladder breaks. Reach the bottom safely, Bard starts going down the ladder. Halfway down, two saw blades shoot out of the wall and sever the ladder and the rope, just above Bard's head and below her feet. Deck safe, success. Bard makes it down and injured. Sorcerer tries to find a way for us to get back up, but can't. Decides to shimmy down what's left of the rope, drop a few feet, and hope to catch the ladder. Success. All down here, long, narrow hall with pressure plates all over. Bard goes first, uses spear to set off pressure plate before we step on it, just in case. Suddenly, walls move and we're confronted with three giant crabs. Fight ensues. First round, I use my reaction to protect Bard from first crab. Second crab decides to grab me. I fail strength check. Grappled. Sorceress starts slinging spells at crab holding me. Bard stabs crab attacking her. I, still with disadvantage, attempt to attack crab holding me and fail. Third crab attacks me. Few rounds proceed like this. Sorcerer hits a few things. I keep missing. I stay grappled. I repeatedly use my reaction to save Bard from first crab. Bard repeatedly misses first crab. Second and third crabs manage to hit me a couple times. Eventually, sorcerer kills crab holding me. Bard finishes off first crab. Third crab, entirely undamaged, grapples me. Sorcerer gets that 20 on firebolt. Crab dies instantly. Sorcerer, crab legs, anyone? End of session. Part 4. Start by harvesting crabs. Manage to get some meat, including legs. I roll survival to attempt to turn one of the crab shells into another shield. My character has a thing where he likes to collect shields. Currently have to fail. I'm sad. Eventually, walls reset and we're back in the hall we started in. Bard decides to attempt to convince the voice to disable the remaining pressure plates in the hall. Rolls performance, with plus 6, including proficiency. 8. Voice is amused, but says no. Bard attempts another tactic. 15. Persuasion. Voice agrees, on one condition. That at least one of us is able to get to the other side without setting off another pressure plate. Party discusses. Decide that I, still with cake disadvantage, shouldn't be the one to try. Discuss more. Decide Bard should try. 4 dex saves. 20. 16. 14. 16. Makes it across. Voice. AWW. You made it across well. I guess I'll turn off the traps. I am a woman of my word. After all. Sorcerer. Good. Because I'm not. Party takes 5 minute laugh break. Moving on. As we reach the far end of the hall. We find a staircase going further down. At nearly 45 degrees. All roll investigation. Find that there are tripwires every 5 feet or so. We really start to regret not having a rogue. 
or a healer. Bard decides to go first, setting off tripwires with 10 foot spear to, hopefully, avoid getting hit by one, manage to get about halfway down, narrowly avoiding severe damage twice. Bard sets off another tripwire, suddenly, hear low rumble behind us. Fuck 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 fuck. Start rushing down the stairs, still haphazardly tripping wires in front. Three wires later, stairs rotate and become a slide, Scooby Doo style. Start sliding down, Bard still waving her spear and setting off traps, somehow still not taking damage from any of them. Reach bottom, find long hall, and a locked door, panic. Nothing to do, nowhere to go, wait for death. Two minutes go by, suddenly, a tiny pebble rolls up to us and stops, rumbling stops. Me, the fuck just happened? Bard picks up the pebble, suddenly, pebble makes a tiny explosion, think indoor firecracker. Bard scared as fuck. Few minutes later, after Bard calms down, we start investigating, find that the door is unlocked, enter into giant cave, with a giant cliff at the far end, a large puddle at the bottom and a boulder at the edge of the cliff. Suddenly, cascade of pebbles falls off the cliff, explode when they reach the bottom. We don't notice for a while, but the water level starts rising. Find a hole in the bottom of the pool, slowly widening. Assume that's why water is rising. Decide to try to pull the boulder off the cliff to plug it. Sorcerer attaches rope to crossbow bolt, shoots boulder, small tug. Boulder rolls off the cliff, lands near the water, not in the hole. We start rolling the boulder toward the hole. All make strength check. Bard and sorcerer succeed. I get a nat 1. Roll to confirm. 3. Boulder starts rolling. Shit happens. I end up on the ground with a boulder on my foot. Strength check again. Solo this time. Decide to use inspiration. To get advantage instead of disadvantage. Immediately roll another nat 1. DM tells me that if I didn't use inspiration. My character will be dead. Roll again. 18. Sigh of relief. MP4. Managed to get boulder off. However, damage is already done. Foot is crushed take minus 2 decks. And speed is halved. Party makes another strength check no nat 1s this time. Managed to get the boulder to plug the hole. Voice starts cackling. Says she just wanted us to wait and let the water bring us up the cliff as we swam around. Start trying to figure out how to get up the cliff. Bard has an idea. Use my war pick and sorcerer's crossbow bolt as makeshift climbing gear. Bring rope to the top. Find somewhere to secure it. Party agrees. Bard starts climbing. Three checks. Choose between acrobatics and athletics. Bard has high decks. Decides to use acrobatics. First check success. Second check success. Third check fail. Manage to get 15 feet up. 10 feet to go. Fall. I try to catch. Roll strength. 17. Disadvantage still. Come on. Come on. 15. Bard takes no damage. However, the pick and bolt are still stuck in the cliff. Sorcerer has another idea. Tie rope to spear. Chuck it at the top ceiling. Strength check. Sorcerer and Bard have minus 1. I have plus 1 but disadvantage. We decide I shouldn't roll. Don't remember who rolls. But they manage to get it stuck in about 20 feet up the cliff. Sorcerer gives the rope a tug. Decides that it's secure. Bard volunteers to go first. Single athletics roll this time. Success. Manage to make it to top of rope. And to spear. Still 5 feet down from the cliff. And under the spear. For some reason. The bard decides to be a gymnast and do that thing where they spin around the horizontal poles and do flips and spins and stuff above it. To try to get on top of the cliff. Acrobatics check. 13. Make it to the top. Just barely. Can't reach spear to pull it out and put it somewhere higher and more secure though. Sorcerer is next. Succeeds athletics check. Bard assists with acrobatics to get to the top. Still unable to get spear up top. Me next. Surprisingly. Don't fail athletics. Have bard and sorcerer assist on acrobatics. Negates disadvantage and gives plus 2. But I still have minus 2 decks from my crushed foot. Barely pass. We decide that we should get the spear and the rope back. Sorcerer and I hold Bard by the ankles. She pulls the spear out of the wall. We pull her up. Next, I try to pull my war pick out of the wall. Using the rope, Sorcerer uses Mage Hand to wrap rope around it. Manage to get it out of the wall. 
Rope comes undone. Pick falls to the ground. Fuck. There goes my only melee weapon. Decide to leave it. It's not worth risking our lives. Look around the top. Large double doors at the far end. Investigate for traps. And sorcerer decides to check for arcana this time. Nothing. Open door. Huge hall. Easily enough to fit a few small houses. Another giant double door at the far end. We investigate the whole hall and the doors. Including arcana. Again. Nothing. Decide to open the doors. Find large. 60 ft long. 30 feet wide. 15 feet high. At the far end. We spot who we assume is the source of the voice throughout the mansion. A monologue while. End of session. DM informs us that he was trying to suggest we take at least a short rest in the hall. We didn't catch it. Part 5. Finale. For now. Voice. Henceforth big bad evil guy. Finishes monologuing. Gets up from her chair. Picks up her rapier. Turns on a huge furnace at the far end of the room. Stabs the controls. Furnace roars to life. Instantly gets hotter in the room. Walks over to a pedestal. Initiative JPEG. Bard rolls 7. Sorcerer rolls 10. I. Disadvantage still 5th session in a row. Roller 2. Big bad evil guy goes first. Elect to do nothing. Sorcerer feeds Bard 1d4 plus 1 healing potion. Bard was at 8 to 15 HP. Then moves behind a nearby box. DM rolls nat 1. Warhammer busts through the box. Misses the sorcerer. And gets flung off the trap arm swinging it. Sorcerer tries to shoot big bad evil guy with crossbow. Misses. Bard moves forward. Does nothing else. Only one spell slot left. My movement is still halved from my crushed foot. Have 12.5 feet without sprinting. Move my full 12.5 feet. Throw a hand axe. 4. Goes past her. Lands just in front of the furnace. Big bad evil guy. Laughs. Do you want to try that again? Me. I'd love to. Thanks. Action surge. Throw my second hand axe. 4 again. Lands right next to the first hand axe. Consistency is key. Am I right? End turn. Big bad evil guy is still waiting. Standing next to the pedestal. Sorcerer casts magic missile. Big bad evil guy presses button on the pedestal. Magic happens. We don't know what. Magic missile hits. 15 damage. Big bad evil guy crumples to the ground. We hear the voice again. Oh come on. Why did you have to kill my body double so soon? I was going to have so much fun with you. Big bad evil guy emerges from a door next to the double's corpse. Does nothing. Bard moves forward again. Throws dagger. I sprint. Nothing else to throw. Trying to keep up with Bard to use protection for her. About two thirds of the way across the room. Big bad evil guy sprints across the room. To a box in a corner across from sorcerer. But farther from me and Bard. Sorcerer casts firebolt. Lights box next to big bad evil guy on fire. Bard runs to the far end of the room. Picks up my hand axes. Sprints back. And hands them to me. I move over a bit. Throw one hand axe. Miss. Fuck this 5 session disadvantage. Big bad evil guy sprints towards sorcerer. Does nothing. Sorcerer uses thunder wave. Big bad evil guy passes safe. Takes 7 damage. Box that they're both next to explodes. 7 damage each. Sorcerer is at 1 HP. Big bad evil guy is thrown a few feet away by thunder wave. Warhammer is thrown a few feet toward me. Idea. Pick up Warhammer. Use it in place of the war pick I lost to the cliff. Bard moves. Casts healing word on sorcerer. No more spell slots left. Restores 8 HP. Sorcerer at 9 out of 11. I throw my other hand axe. Then hobble toward the warhammer on the ground. And get halfway. Big bad evil guy sprints over to me. Does nothing else. Sorcerer shoots crossbow. Misses. Bard runs over. Tries to stab big bad evil guy with dagger. Misses. Ends up on the other side. I consider going to grab the warhammer. Realize that big bad evil guy would get attack of opportunity. Decide not to. Decide that the only thing I can do. With no hand axes left. Is shield bash. In a previous session. We decided that it was an improvised attack. No proficiency. Just d20 and strength mod. Still have disadvantage. Miss. Obviously. DM rolls 3 dice. I get scared. Big bad evil guy tries to stab with her rapier. I barely dodge. 
Fumbling out of the way, Rapier stab again, somehow, miss again. Suddenly puts dagger in her offhand, stabs again, hit, for damage, down to 11 out of 20. Sorcerer casts something, misses. Bard pulls out spear, misses, follows up with dagger, misses again. I shield bash again, miss, end turn, DM rolls 3 dice. Oh fuck this again dot mp4. Rapier, miss. Rapier, miss. Dagger, hit, 5 damage, 6 out of 20 hit points left. Sorcerer does something, I forget what. Sorcerer points out that we've done 33 damage and big bad evil guy should be close to dead. Bard misses again, shield bash, miss. DM rolls 3 more dice, holy fucking shit this fucker is powerful. Rapier, miss. Rapier, 5 damage, dagger, 6 damage. I'm at minus 5 HP. Sorcerer casts another spell. Hits. Big bad evil guy still up. Bard stabs. Misses. I make the first death save of the campaign. And of my career. Fail. Big bad evil guy turns to Bard. Miss. Hit. Hit. Bard goes down. Sorcerer casts another spell. Bard and I both succeed death saves. Big bad evil guy sprints toward Sorcerer. At this point. The fire from the exploded box has spread and covered roughly one stroke four of the room. Sorcerer runs back, shoots crossbow, hits. We don't know how much damage we've done, but we agreed that it should be a lot. Big bad evil guy catches up to sorcerer. Same drill. Hit. Miss. Hit. Sorcerer goes down. Big bad evil guy starts laughing. As sorcerer is fading out, she sees big bad evil guy snap her fingers fire in the furnace goes out. Another snap. Box fire goes out. Big bad evil guy carries Bard's body around a bit and drops her on top of me. Sorcerer starts laughing with big bad evil guy. She's a bit sadistic too. Water starts filling the room. We're all unconscious. Wake up in a makeshift hospital. What the fuck just happened? JPEG. We're all at full health. Somehow my foot is healed. My disadvantage is finally gone. Check my equipment. Still have my armor. With a couple minor holes in it, both shields, backpack, don't have war pick, obviously, war hammer, or any hand axes. Look around, find medical records for all of us on a table nearby. We were all nearly dead, we all had multiple stab wounds, sorcerer had horrible burns, Bard and I were apparently drowning. Only sorcerer knows about the water. Apparently, it had all been paid for by the high inquisitor, our employer. We start heading toward the door, thoroughly traumatized, I tell the others to wait while I check the door for traps. 18. DM says there's nothing on this side. Very cautiously, I open the door, nothing happens. Next room is a large office with multiple desks, and people milling about with paperwork. Bard finds a window, sees that it's night, and starts crying. Book. I'm still not sure why, pulls a feather out of her pocket and starts batting it around. She tends to play up the cat side of being a tabaxi. I remember I have the feathers from part 2, pull out a couple handfuls, toss them to Bard. She cheers up almost instantly, find official looking person, ask her what happened. Turns out we'd been gone for a week. High Inquisitor sent some people to the mansions to investigate, found the one we were in was entirely burned down. Basement was flooded. Somehow found us and got us out. Brought us back to the city. Healed us. And let us rest. We were unconscious for two weeks. During those three weeks, the empire collapsed due to the emperor's assassination and political fuckitude that followed. Currently in a 17-way war with the rest of the former empire, jawdrop.gif tells us that the High Inquisitor, now HQ, wanted to see us. We go to his office. Guards be guards. Takes a few minutes, then let us in. HQ says that even though we didn't catch the serial killer, we did manage to confirm the identity and flush her out. Says he'll pay us. No gold. Instead, we get the deed to the land, as well as everything that was formerly owned by big bad evil guy. Unfortunately, mansion is toast. They had a small cottage built nearby to compensate. We accept. Session ends. Level up. DM informs us that the big bad evil guy had 65 health, and he planned that we wouldn't be able to defeat her, we managed to get her down to 21 hit points. But if we had managed to win, we would have gotten 2 levels, much better loot, 
more pay, and the mansion wouldn't be destroyed. We also wouldn't have missed the start of the war. Thanks for reading to the end of my first, monstrously long, green text. Last part is my 8th session ever, finished about 3 and a half hours ago, and could have easily been a total player kill. Afterward, we agree that whoever loses their character first will make a healer. Too long didn't read Noblewoman as serial killer, has trapped mansion, we get fucked but make it through and find Noblewoman big bad evil guy. Fight ensues, is rigged against us, we all go down, but we survive don't get money, but get house on big bad evil guy destroyed estate. So I've recently moved Nick Badia merch over to Teesprings and have a few new designs. Listings are below the video and in the description. So I am an affiliate of NordVPN. If you have been thinking of getting a VPN with everything going on at the minute NordVPN is offering 75% off a 3 year plan. I have been using Nor myself for a few years now because it helps support a lot of the people I like to watch on YouTube and I think it's pretty cool they have let me become an affiliate. So check out norvpn.org forward slash nickbeardia and use coupon code nickbeardia for 75% off while the offer is on. Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! Child Protective Services. It's time to stop!